one to determine new ways on how to treat MS. Biotherapies are going from trial to market and innovative alternative strategies are being tested. Different options, same goal. Let's hear more. We are involved in a number of trials exploring the therapeutic utility of new and emerging drugs, amongst them, for example, BG12 and lm 2 blood. BG12 is an oral drug, uh, has been shown to uh, act both as an anti-inflammatory agent, but there are also hints, experimental data, to suggest it can provide some uh, sort of neuroprotection. And that's what we are very desperately looking for in MS therapy. Results uh, of the phase three pivotal trials have been um, quite unexpectedly better than uh, those obtained in phase two. So really generating a hope that this will be another advance in uh, our uh, therapeutic armamentarium. Alamtuzumab is uh, different. It's a monoclonal antibody. It's directed against uh, T cells and B cells, as you know, crucial players in the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. This drug or monoclonal antibody was compared with standard first-line therapy, Rebif, and was uh, superior in terms of relapse rate, progression, uh, disability improvement, um, and the usual MR parameters of disease activity. What we know so far is that there have been a lot of studies reporting on CCSVI and uh, we know that there's a lot of variability in the results because it's a diagnosis that's looking mainly at the venous system. We wanted to see what could affect the venous system. And we asked patients, 16 patients, 11 MS and uh, 5 without MS to not drink or eat overnight. We would do a ultrasound and uh, then we would look for CCSVI. And after that ultrasound, right away we would give them 1.5 liters of Gatorade to drink. We would wait about 40 to 45 minutes and then repeat the CCSVI in a now hydrated state. Basically, in the dehydrated state, uh, we found that out of 16 patients, 7 met the definition for CCSVI. And after they drank the Gatorade, out of those 7 that met um, CCSVI definition initially, 5 of them no longer met the definition after the Gatorade. This study asked the question, well, could hydration status have an impact? And it looks like it does. This is relevant because if patients who are a little bit dehydrated are more likely to meet the criteria for CCSVI, that suggests there may be a different explanation for these ultrasound findings, or at least a confounding or something that complicates the assessment aside from just MS. Well, basically, we know that uh, UV radiation plays a role in MS because the disease is more frequent in cold countries. When people start to study uh, UV radiation, the first molecule that we were thinking that played a role was vitamin D. But we thought that probably vitamin D is not the only factor that affects uh, the disease, the course of the disease, and they have a relationship with UV. UV activate other molecule that is called urocanic acid. We found that in the, in the patients, urocanic acid is different, the level of urocanic acid are different to the normal control. We didn't found difference between relapse activity and exacerbation activity. I don't know that the disease will be a single factor, a single problem. I think urocanic acid, vitamin D, uh, and all the different studies that are going on now will be part of, the, part of this puzzle. In the future, if we know more about the pathology of the disease, we will have more tools to treat the disease. Another fascinating day at the Ectrams Conference, the largest gathering of MS researchers in the world. In our next segment, we'll be discussing the role of vitamin D and how it plays in MS. We'll see you next time.